John Mechie is one of the most incredible and insane football players we have ever seen. Not only is he great on the football field, but the guy's story off the field is honestly out of a movie. He's one of those guys that everyone can rally behind, and after researching his story, he's now one of my favorite players. He didn't just have one medical setback, but he had four. Somehow, Mechie went from being in multiple continents as a kid, leaving his country at 13 years old to chase his football dreams, and was hit with a heart condition, a terrible leg injury, and cancer. Somehow the guy has overcome every possible odd and also could be a star weapon for the Houston Texans this year. They're currently rebuilding with rookie quarterback CJ Stroud and in a wide receiver room with some unknowns, Mechie has a chance to be the next big thing for them. In today's video, I want to tell his insane story, talk about how he overcame all of this tragedy, his career at Bama, and why he could be a steal for the Texans. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the insane rise of John Mechie. Going back in time, Mechie called three different continents home by the age of seven. He was born in Taiwan, moved to Ghana, and then ended up in Canada with his four brothers. They were seeking a better life than the one they had in Africa, and they ended up living in the Toronto area while his father stayed back in Africa. Africa and Canada were very different places. He said everything from the schooling, the community, and even the day-to-day -day life was just drastically different. At the age of seven, he'd have to run from security dogs, and little did he know that would help him with his speed and elusiveness that would later make him an NFL prospect. While his dad was in Africa, being in Canada was slowly becoming a little bit more normal for him, but most of the kids in his area enjoyed hockey or soccer. But eventually, football became their draw. Money was still tight in the family though, and he said, quote, towards the end of middle school, I started playing a little bit. Before that, I wasn't able to play because we didn't have a lot of money, and my older brothers were playing, so my mom couldn't put us through football at the same time. When he eventually got his shot, teammates and coaches saw his natural speed and quickness, and he knew he had what it took to play big time college football one day. He said, quote, I knew since well before high school. That was my main mission, and looking back at me at age 13, it's kind of shocking how confident I was. I basically knew no one and moved away from my family to, to do what I needed to do. He decided to move to America to chase his dream and would eventually enroll at the St. James School in Hagerstown, Maryland. This is a school that specializes in helping foreign kids play high school football, and two days after emailing the coach, Mechie and his mother came and visited and eventually signed. He was pumped to be chasing his dream, but early on in his freshman year, he was hit with his first setback. Mechie was hit hard in the chest during a play and immediately his heart began racing and racing. He discovered that he had a murmur and was kept off the field the rest of his year in precaution. Even after his dreams were nearly derailed because of it, he would not be denied. He was always deeply motivated to make it and nothing had ever been given to him, so he was never gonna stop. A cardiologist eventually cleared him to play and by the end of his senior year, Mechie was a heralded recruit. But how did this happen? Well, he caught a total of 132 passes for 2,506 yards and 26 touchdowns there. He also nearly rushed for 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns and had a combined five defensive and kick return scores. He gained nearly 30 offers from schools such as Alabama, Penn State, Michigan, and Maryland, but it would later come down to two programs, the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Alabama eventually became the front runner as when he went on his visit to Bama, he wasn't interested in all the extracurricular activities and parties that would end up going on during those visits but instead wanted to impress the players and the coaching staff. He ended up rooming with Jerry Judy, and on that Saturday night when he could have been out having fun, him and Mechie went to the Crimson Tide workout facility and threw balls with Tua Tungvaloa. He said, quote, that was the moment where I wanted to come here instead of any other school because I'd like to be around like-minded people. So yeah, from there he committed to Alabama over Penn State, and the rest is history. He said, quote, I decided to pick the Crimson Tide because of the program, and it felt like home. He also credits their wide receivers coach Josh Gaddis as another reason he went there. Mechie came back to the St. James campus and informed his coach of his decision to go to Bama, but all the coaches and his parents recommended he do a prep year because at the time he was only 17 years old. After graduating, he eventually went to the Petty School in Highestown, New Jersey. He played a little bit after future first round pick Jahan Dotson and ended up appearing in eight games for the Falcons. He caught 36 passes for 731 yards and 13 scores and 18 total touchdowns. Bama fans were pumped to have Mechie, and scouts were also high on him. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a four-star recruit, the number 39 wide receiver, and the 262nd best player in the class of 2019. So, how would he end up doing at Bama? When Mechie would arrive at Bama, 
He spent the majority of his freshman year watching guys like Devontae Smith, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, and Jalen Waddle play. He was ready to be the guy in 2020, but before that, he would already create some buzz. He became an A-Day sensation as a true freshman, and because of that, many were saying that he was going to follow in the footsteps of those great four receivers. Following the departure of Judy and Ruggs, Mechie ended up becoming the third string wideout with Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle beside him. Led by Steve Sark, this became one of the most potent offenses in college football, and Mechie was starting to blow up. His best play of the season, though, wasn't even a catch. In the SEC title game against Florida, Mac Jones had thrown an interception, and Trey Dean had picked it off for Florida. As he was running it back trying to score, Mechie ran from behind, tackled him, and poked the ball loose. Bam ended up keeping the ball, and it was absolute craziness, and epitomized Mechie. Going back a few weeks though, his role would really increase after Jalen Waddle got hurt. He had nearly 200 yards and two touchdowns in a win over A&M, had three catches for 50 yards and a touchdown in their win against number three Georgia, and then against Tennessee, had seven catches for 151 yards. To finish out the year, he had a touchdown against Kentucky, had two touchdowns and a win over Auburn, and then obviously had a decent performance in the SEC Championship game. He ended up helping them get to the college football playoff, where he'd catch three passes in their win over Notre Dame, and eight catches for their win over number three Ohio State. Mechie was a national champion in 2020, and finished the year as one of the top young receivers in the nation. He finished with 55 catches for 916 yards and six touchdowns. Going into 2021, he was definitely going to be the number one guy on the team, but luckily, he would eventually get some help. They brought in former Ohio State wide receiver Jamison Williams, and those two together would go on a tear. He caught a touchdown in their week one victory over number 14 Miami, and then was consistent in wins over Mercer, Florida, and Southern Miss. He had a touchdown in their win over number 12 Ole Miss, but his low point would come in their loss to AM. In that game, he would drop three passes, committed a huge holding penalty, and by that time, Jamison Williams had taken over the wide receiver one role. While he was also dealing with an injury behind the scenes, Mechie didn't give up and exploded in his next two games. He caught seven passes for 117 yards and a touchdown against Mississippi State, and then against Tennessee, had 11 catches for 121 yards and two touchdowns. He had absolutely erupted, but it wasn't done there. He had nine catches for 73 yards and a touchdown and a win over LSU, and then had a career-high 13 catches against Auburn. He also had 150 yards in that game, and while Ja'Cory Brooks made the biggest play, Mechie did a lot of the dirty work. They are now going back to the SEC Championship game, where they would face off with number one Georgia. In this game, the tide would come out rolling, and Mechie caught six passes for 97 yards and a touchdown. But he'd have another setback. He'd end up tearing his ACL in that game, and despite still wanting to play on it, Coach Saban just wouldn't let it happen. He ended up having to watch Bama from the sidelines, as they would eventually advance to the national championship and lose to the Georgia Bulldogs. Jamison Williams also went down in that game, and Bama could have really used his help. He had that injury set back in 2020, now had this torn ACL, and had his heart condition from high school, but it would not end there. First though, he'd have some things go his way. He had an insanely productive 2021 season, as he had 96 catches, which was the third most in school history. He declared for the 2022 NFL Draft and became just the third Taiwanese-born player to ever make the NFL. Eventually, the Houston Texans saw a lot of potential in him and decided to draft him with the 44th overall pick in the second round. This was huge for Mechie, but unfortunately, he'd be hit with his fourth and most scary setback in his career as he was diagnosed with leukemia. He previously thought he had only had a cold, but after having headaches for weeks, he decided to talk to a doctor and learned that he had cancer. He remembers clearly how him and his patients could see NRG Stadium from the MD Anderson Cancer Center, and at the time, everything was uncertain. He didn't know how long he would live, he didn't know if he'd ever play football again, and he said, quote, you can only rely on your faith in those situations. He ended up taking it head on and made a complete full recovery. He worked incredibly hard, kept the right attitude, and the Lord protected him. This past spring, the team said he was making amazing progress and he became a full participant in their offseason program in April. He was eventually finally cleared and the Texans general manager said, quote, he's cleared the practice in our training camp. I'm sure he's anxious and excited to be back on the field. While many are talking about their rookie wide receiver Tank Dell, Mechie is also a rookie. He's never caught an NFL pass, and besides his two preseason catches, is pretty much completely new. CJ Stroud and the Texans will be looking for new young weapons to emerge, and Mechie has all the tools, potential, and work ethic to make it happen. He feels better than ever, and will hopefully be one of the most inspirational players in football, both this year and long term. But what do you guys think? If you're a Bama or a Texans fan, what do you think of John Mechie? What do you think of the Houston Texans this year? And what rookie or NFL player should I take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.